we've all heard people say that for them, they may have become an overnight success, right? And some people you might hear say, well, it took 15 years to become an overnight success or my, my night was 15 years or whatever it might be. But y'all, when I tell you after watching this Tyler Perry documentary, learning some of the things that I learned, hearing some of the stuff that I heard, I had to challenge myself and say, do I want success or am I as committed to success as Tyler Perry has been? But even further than that, like, what does this look like for me in my life? So look, if you haven't seen the Tyler Perry documentary, you might not want to listen to this episode just yet. But if you've seen it already, I would encourage you to tap in and drop something down in the comments if you're watching on YouTube and let me know what was your best part, what was your biggest takeaway, because we're going to dive in. We're going to talk about takeaways. We're going to dive in and talk about how this show or how this documentary ultimately really um, shows us the, the bloodline and the heartbeat of true entrepreneurship. But y'all, let's, let's go ahead and dive in on this episode. Welcome to All right, family. So what's going on? You're here for another episode of Beyond the Ball. And we've made a transition as of late. And we said we want to talk more about entrepreneurship. And before I was focusing more so on student athletes and showing them entrepreneurship and introducing them to different career paths. But y'all realized if I can talk about entrepreneurship to entrepreneurs, then I definitely can talk about the student athletes. So the shift in the focus of now here on this channel, if you're on YouTube with Beyond the Ball Media, um, but mainly on our platform, which is Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones, we're going to start talking about entrepreneurship. And I'm going to start giving you all some real game, real tangible, applicable nuggets, words of wisdom, whatever you want to call it. It's going to happen on this platform here. Right. So we're going to we're going to have the audio going live on Apple and Spotify on Mondays. Right. Then we're going to have the video going live on Tuesdays. But throughout the week, if you stay tapped into the channel, you're going to get more content. And then Friday, I'm going to give you an additional audio episode. So if you haven't subscribed to the podcast on your streaming platforms, do that now. Type in Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones and make sure to uh, hit the follow button button there all right so now y'all i want to just play this i want to play this little clip just to set like the framework or not even framework but just to set the the mindset the atmosphere for what we're about to dive into today all right so i'm gonna play this clip and just tap in real quick what filmmaker has had five movies open number one at the box office in the last four years spielberg tarantino scorsese no, this record belongs to Tyler Perry. So look, there we have it, right? So in the clip, right, in that brief clip, what we hear is Tyler Perry has done something that, the, that individuals that we have no heard of, they said Spielberg, they said some other artists, we've heard these names before, and they are synonymous with greatness in their particular arena. However... Tyler Perry has superseded what they've done. Just let that resonate for a second. John, why are you going so hard talking about Tyler Perry? So, for one, I want you to see this documentary if you have not. Okay, that's number one. If you have not watched the documentary just yet, you need to go ahead and watch it. It's going to inspire you as an entrepreneur or it's going to inspire you as a human, right? Just as a true human being. But in, in watching the documentary, there were, there were 10... Uh, points that I just want to extract and share with you all today. 10 points that really hit home and resonated for me just on listening to, to Tyler's story, right? Hearing his journey, hearing what he went through, hearing the ebbs and hearing the flows. And I think there's so much relatability, but then when we take it and bring it back and then we really assess, but how does this apply in my life? What does this look like in my life? That's the part that I think really is where you're going to really get the most out of this. So listen to the information I'm sharing, but then begin to think, how can this apply to you in your life? How can this begin to apply to you within your own business? Right? Because that's when you're going to get the most out of this. All right. So without further ado, and if you haven't seen it, like I said, if you haven't seen the documentary, you might not want to listen to this episode just yet. Okay. Because I'm probably going to spoil it. 
and I don't like doing that. So, okay. All right. So man, the first thing that really jumped out at me was hearing that his first play sold 30 seats. I don't know if anybody has, I don't know if you've ever tried to uh, do an event, plan a conference, and you invest money into the venue, right? You invest money into a photographer. You invest money to a videographer. You invest all this money, and then you sell 30 seats or less than that, and now you're thinking, oh, man. What am I going to do now? Because I was spending all this money in hopes that I was going to 2x, 3x return whatever I just spent. But thinking that this is where you started, I said, ooh, with his first play. So the question I have for you is this. This is the first point. How long will you continue to persevere? Right? Tyler Perry sold 30 seats in his the first time he rolled out the play. Then, after seven years of not having success, hear me and hear me good. After seven years, sometimes as entrepreneurs, I'll go first. We're ready to quit after seven days, after seven hours, maybe seven weeks, maybe seven months. Y'all, I was at the point where I was driving in an Uber one time, and I'm like, man, I don't even want to speak no more. Ain't nobody responding to these emails. Nobody's picking up the phone. I don't want to speak. I'm just going to just Uber. Like, I'm just, I'm here, right? But y'all, after seven years of doing his shows, he was ready to quit. Then a promoter gave him a call. Ring, 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 ring. House of Blues. Tyler was ready to hang it up. They was like, say, can you do the play one more time? Right? Of course, this is over the span of like the seven years. Like I said, said, hey, can you do it one more time? He did it. And then he went outside and he saw people. There was a line wrapped around the corner, y'all. A line wrapped around the corner to see this man play. That's more than 30 seat sales. But then get this, and I'm going to give you the next point right here. After that situation, after that occurrence, after that instance, then the next thing that happened, now he's selling tickets, right? This is dope. He's selling tickets. We got people coming. But then the actors that he booked to come out and be a part of the play, then people started calling in. People started saying, I can't show up. So then what did he do? Point number two for you is this, look. Do what you have to do. Do what you have. To. If the goal is for you to get to this place and you were going to get there driving, but you ran out of gas and there was a reward for you to get to this place, I guarantee you're going to do what you have to do to get there. So the same thing applies with you and your business as an entrepreneur. You got to do what you got to do. So what did he do? Y'all, he started playing both roles. He playing two roles. This is how Medea came about. It was supposed to be a woman that was supposed to step up and play the role. Nope, didn't show up. So he did it. He didn't do it because he wanted to. He did it because it was necessary. All right? So look. Here's the other part. Number three. Y'all, each and every one of us The Bible says we're called for a time such as this, right? So for my believers out there, you're called for a time such as this. You're chosen. Tyler Perry said he was done. The only reason that I can make sense of this in my mind of how this played out the way it played out with him going seven years and not really having true success with the play He was doing the plays every weekend for seven years. And then it finally popped. Seven is the number of completion, which is wild, right? Because I'm just having a realization right now. But then when he got the call, 
he still didn't say, I'm done. He said, all right, I'll do it. I'll give it one more go. Imagine if for you, what you really desire, what you really want for your life is just, it's just on the other side. Just on the other side of you saying, I'll do it. And then you making it happen, whatever that looks like for you, right? Because my man was, look, look, the fourth point is this. 300 shows and over 30,000 people a week. Hear me and hear me clearly. My man was doing 300 shows, seeing over 30,000 people a week. John, what are you, what are you saying? I'm saying this man understood repetition. This man understood it has to work or it has to work. This man understood that he was going to even go further than he was comfortable with. Question I have for you today is what's your tipping point? Is it when you're in debt, 10K, 15K, 20K? Is your tipping point when you get uncomfortable, when you don't feel like doing it, you don't want to do it? It's the weekend, so you want to do what you want to do. What's your tipping point? Y'all, he was doing 300 shows in a year. Come on. Okay, okay, so let's, let's take a step back. Let's take a step. Let me slow down. Let me slow down, right? I want to take my time here. I want to take my time. So the fifth point, man, and this one was good. This one was so good, y'all. Uh, they went and said in the film, and shout out to Killer Mike, because Killer Mike really pointed this point out in the, uh, in the documentary. They went on to say that one thing that Tyler Perry was doing, he was catering to an audience that had been neglected. There's an audience out there that you can serve but you might have to do a little bit of research. You might have to drill down. You might have to ask some questions. You might have to interview some people. You might have to see what they really need in order for you to really be able to serve this audience. But my fifth point right here is Tyler Perry went out. He identified that audience. And then he built his audience with intention. Let me say it one more time. He went out and identified the audience, right? And based on his story, where he talks about him being abused, right? He talks about the struggle that he went through growing up. The intentionality came from when he was a kid, as he was getting beat. He went on to say that he would turn on his imagination to where in that moment he would escape his body and go into a different world. Because that world was happy. That world was creative. That world was free. It allowed him to escape the nasty here and now. And the reason why that's so powerful is because those tough memories that he had as a kid, he was now able to take these experiences and then he was able to incorporate them in the, into his plays. And the reason he incorporated them into his plays was because, one, it was creating conversation that people needed to have but weren't. It was creating dialogue. And then after his plays, he went on to say that he would take about 20 minutes after his shows. He would come out and then he would just talk and would just share and just pour out his heart. And one thing I just want to highlight here is he didn't have to do that. But this is what building an audience with intention looks like, right? When you're an individual and you say, in order for me to build rapport and build relationship with these people out here, they need to know who I am. They need to know a little bit about my story. They need to know why I'm doing what I'm doing and what's at the heart and at the core of it. And that's what Tyler Perry did, right? He's coming out after the show and coming and talking 
to the people having a conversation and in the conversations well more so in the plays so let's go back he's creating intentionality through the content that he is incorporating into his plays through abuse through the struggle just the black struggle right through challenges and different things that he grew up in alcoholism and by him creating laughter this was now some this is, laughter has been something for years that in the black community it's helped us be relieved or at least in that moment to mitigate whatever the current challenge was because if we're able to laugh about certain things then we're lighter and then we're able to keep on moving keep on going and continue throughout the rest of our day throughout the rest of our week right we we're, we're able to let loose and now we have something to where we can go forward right so he's incorporating this into these plays and now he's creating a relationship and a bond with anybody who has also experienced the pain the hurt and the suffering that he's experienced so now people are connecting with him by way of connecting to whatever the trauma was whatever the struggle was whatever the pain was incorporated in the play and other people are being educated other people in the family are now being able to have these conversations and this is what it looks like to really begin to uh, create intention around building your audience. Because if you connect somebody with a story, people are 22 times more likely to remember things that are incorporated within story. Right? That's number one. But then if you also pair that with relatability... Now they see themselves in the person on the stage. They see themselves or they see their, their cousin, their brother, their mom, their dad as one of the individuals. And now you've got a lifelong fan. So that, that, that's building the audience with intention. But, but then the next thing I want to just break down, y'all, is think about this. Think about this. Right. So. Tyler Perry was in the spot in the position. To where? Well, wait, 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 wait. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Well, no, no, no. We'll, we'll go there. We'll go there. So, so now the the next thing I want you to think about is. What's your vehicle, right? If we're talking about your business as the product, the service, are we talking media? Are we talking digital products? Are we talking physical products? Are we talking storefront? Tyler Perry clearly has chosen media, right? He's good at media. Why would he not leverage media? My man just bought a studio. Well, he built out a studio. But what is your vehicle? And I'm asking that because th th think about this. If you wanted to convey a message to people, what would be the fastest, best, wisest, if we're talking about like investing into getting that message out, way for you to take an idea up here and send it out to the market, from your mind to the market? What's the fastest, best, wisest way for you to do that? Tyler Perry chose media. And then get this. As he was getting ready to, as he was getting ready to um, do a push for movies, right? Doing a push. His movie hadn't been advertised on television. And it wasn't shown in theaters. Think about that. How do you do a push? And you haven't been advertised on TV, nor have you been seen in theaters. But yet, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, 17 years later, became the number one movie in 2022. They said the diverse, they, 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 they said that they sat down in a boardroom 
as Tyler is going through the process and trying to get his movie out there, right? They, they, they said that they're asking around. One of the, one of the gentlemen who was going to be, uh, he, he was the, he represented the, the side of the production company, right? The movie company. They're as, he's asking his team, have you all heard of Tyler Perry? You know who Tyler Perry is? Anybody? Raise a hand. Show a hand. Anybody know who he is? He said, everybody, he looked around, the room was white, and he was like, nope, nope, nobody could raise a hand. But then he brought in the diversity committee, he said they meet every so often. He said, have any of y'all heard of Tyler Perry? Then the hands started shooting up. It's like, well, why? why? Why do these people know about who Tyler Perry, how do they know who Tyler Perry is? And I'm going to assume the same reason they knew about him the same way I knew about him. He was doing the plays. He was doing 300 plus plays all across the country from 1998 to 2004. I remember walking into my grandmom's living room and seeing a Tyler Perry play on TV. They were playing it on VHS. Everybody was laughing. Because they created relatability, but more importantly, Tyler Perry understood the vehicle that he's going to be utilizing. Going from doing the plays, then doing the movies, then doing the TV shows. And here's the thing. People said that he wasn't going to make... People have said harsh things about Tyler Perry, right? Why is that man dressing up in, 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 in a dress? Why is he doing that? He's never going to make it. Oh, he's buffooning, cooning, and all this other stuff. People have said this about this man left, right, up, down. However, he understood, I can't listen to the critics. That's the seventh point, y'all. Who are you listening to in your life that has no ownership whatsoever, but you still are allowing them to stake their claim in your life, in your business, in what you're doing? Cut that off. All right, let, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, the eighth point was Tyler Perry just took topics and made them relatable. So I said it a little bit earlier, but think about how there are certain topics that are plaguing certain communities. If it be the black community, white community, Hispanic, Latino, Latinx, there are topics and issues that are plaguing each and every one of our communities. But Tyler Perry began to take these topics like, uh, molestation, drug addiction, and pain. And at the end of the shows, like I said before, he taking 20 minutes to just break these things down, like talk about them. And as you create that level of conversation, now a play isn't just a play, but now it turns to an experience. But even further than that, you go home, and now the conversation can keep going, Right. Now people can begin to feel more comfortable having this conversation because it already was started. And in these last points, I'm just going to join together, y'all. These last points, I'm going to join together. So in 2023 and beyond, people tell us that in order for us to sell something, uh, we need to be able to get a corner on the market, right? We need to have a tribe. We need to have a community. We need to have a crowd of people. Social media and society has told us that this is what we need. But social media has not told us how we get that, right? Would you agree? Would you agree? If y'all rocking with the video on YouTube, I would love it if you smash that like button and just drop the comment down below. Um, but listen to Tyler Perry. He said that he, as he was going around doing all these shows, 300 plus shows, week after week after week, right? He said that he would ask people to sign up for his email list. John, Tyler Perry had an email list. Why would Tyler Perry ask people to sign up on his email list? 
because he was building a tribe. He's building his community. He's seeing who's out there say, hey, I'm interested. I want to know more. Hey, I want to know when the next show is. Hey, I want to know when you're coming to my city. I want to know when you drop a new play. But think about this. Think about you not having 100 people on your email list. Not having 1,000 people on your email list. Tyler Perry had a few million people on his email list. I don't think you heard me. Tyler Perry had a few million people on his email list. Well, John, why did he want to get a few million people on his email list? Like, what purpose would that serve? Point 10 as I bring it to a close. Tyler Perry was able to sell out shows before he ever went mainstream. The people that he was on his email list, he would send out a message letting these people know, hey, we're about to come to your city. Hey, we got another play coming. Hey, we're going to be here. We're going to be there. So he's doing this under the radar because he realized that having people's contact information is extremely vital. I'm not here today to tell you that you need an email list, but I am here to tell you that you need to, a way to get people's contact information. All right. So these were just a few points that I gathered from uh, the Tyler Perry documentary with me giving a little bit of my, you know, insight, a little bit of my feedback in there as well. But I would love if you would just drop down below, like what was something you took from the Tyler Perry documentary, right? What was something that, you heard, you saw to where you were like blown away. Of course, I could have went on and on and on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewatch the documentary one more time, at least. But it was so powerful to hear this man's story, to hear all he had to share, to hear the hurt, to hear the pain, all the people talking about him. But then to see the fruits of his labor, him being able to open his own studio in Atlanta, which they're calling Black Hollywood. Y'all, this brother kept the studio open during quarantine and continued filming, well, during COVID, when we were quarantined, to keep filming because he understood that's 200, 300 people's jobs. Y'all, we talking about Tyler Perry. I've seen Tyler Perry resurrect people's careers just by way of the, pro, the, the, the movies that he's put out, the projects he's put out, giving people jobs. You can say whatever you want to say about Tyler Perry. You can feel how you want to feel. But Tyler Perry is in the position that he's in because he's, he never stopped giving. Tyler Perry has been giving people opportunities and continues to. He opened up his studio and he's named the studios after Whoopi Goldberg, after Sidney Poitier, after Denzel Washington, after Will Smith. We can go down the list and down the line. He continues to give. And there's one principle that I know. What you sow is you're going to reap. That's a biblical truth as well as a worldly principle. What you put in the ground is going to yield you something from the ground. And the more you put in the ground, the more likely you are to reap from the ground. But y'all, we're going to get out of here. I just wanted to share my takeaways from this um, documentary with you. If you haven't seen it uh, just yet, the, the documentary is on, it's on Prime, it's on Amazon Prime, and it is entitled, just so I give you the name of it, just in case you want to go watch it, it's entitled Maxine's Baby. 
Maxine's baby, the Tyler Perry story. Yeah. Powerful, man. Shout out to Tyler Perry, right? Shout out to him. Um, but family, we're going to go ahead and slide out of here. And remember, stay tapped into uh, Beyond the Ball and all things Beyond the Ball by hitting subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Um, but if you're listening on whatever streaming platform, just go ahead and hit that follow button so you can get new and updated episodes as soon as they drop, right? You get early access when you tap in on the audio. Uh, but family, we're getting out of here. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what your takeaways were or even let me know what's a topic that I can unpack around entrepreneurship for you in your business. But family, this is Beyond the Ball and I'm Jonathan Jones and I hope you have a great, great, great rest of the day and I hope you get to work because it's time for all of us to grow because the more that we grow, the more insight we gain, the more we can win together. Peace. God bless.